Thank you, thank you. It's great to be here. I'm Michael. I'm from Finland. Finland is uh, very strict about rules and schedules, so I'm totally freaked out that <clears throat> we're running about, I don't know, 15 minutes late. Your coffee break is, is about over now. Sorry about that, guys. Please bear with me. During my presentations, I have one rule, one rule only. I demand absolute silence and no computers or smartphones. I'm obviously joking. Don't worry, guys. You're very lucky because I'm going to reveal you guys the future of digital consumer business and even better, how to be prepared for that future. Are you guys ready? All right. So the three things I'm going to talk about. The first thing is individual user experience. And why is that important? The second thing what I'm going to talk about is a little bit about something called augmented reality. And why you guys should care about that already today. And the third topic is growing your business today while being ready for tomorrow. So let's get to it. Traditionally, <clears throat> brands haven't been able to have a direct, constant communication with their customers. As we all know it, there are just too, simply too many consumers out there. So there are two walls standing between the brand and the consumer. Used to be retailers, so those stores who eventually sell the products that the brands manufacture. And more and more often now, of course, we guys are in digital business, e-tailers selling the products the brands manufacture. And then <clears throat> the way to communicate with the consumer, to remind about the brand, to tell about how amazingly good it is, you have basically three choices. Traditional mass media, which is slowly fading away. Then we have Google and Facebook, and that's pretty much it. Well, if you think about yourself as a business owner, it's not very necessary, very uh, tempting idea that you have two brick walls between you and your customer. So obviously the challenge for businesses is how to create that direct individual connection with the customer. Luckily, of course, we have the digital world. It should be easy, right? You guys, uh, however, pointed out how many different devices you're already using and it's just growing all the time. So we have the offline stores which still play a pretty relevant role. We have the mobile phones, tablets, computers. You go to your IT department, you're like, hey, what we need to do is we need to have a direct, constant, seamless communication with our customers. And it has to be amazingly good. And your IT department and your company is like, okay, we can do it, it's no problem. But the challenge is, as we all know, that in order for this to really work, every touch point, every time we communicate with the customer, no matter what the channel, channel is, it needs to be so amazingly good communication that they don't even consider switching to another brand. And because of that, it starts to get quite challenging. So we have an awful lot of different touch points, ways to use technology to create this communication, to understand what, it, what the cons consumer or customer is doing. And uh, that creates huge amounts of data and then it becomes really difficult to make this automated in such a way that it actually is individual and it understands all the different actions what the consumer or the user has done in all these different channels and devices. But nevertheless, it is possible to build it and it's going to be perfect when you release it in 2022. 
This is the Panama Channel, by the way, which obviously I've heard works really well, but it, I think it took about 50 or 100 years to build it. Uh, so what I would like to challenge is that maybe this thinking about uh, five-year digital pros, uh, project or process or strategy or whatever uh, might be a little bit risky for today's business. It's not news anymore. Mobile has a right, mobile has won, and the mobiles, mobile wars have been won by Apple and Google. <coughs> we can all see it, what is happening with the mobile phones. We have reached a different stage. We're not at the innovation stage anymore. We're now all about scaling. So small iterative improvements and the companies need to be able to deliver these products to mass markets. 2.5 billion smartphones in use, probably already old stats. So the issues what matters about the phones are changing. However, everyone thinks, or almost everyone I guess thinks that the next revolution is at the door and that is augmented reality. And augmented reality how I think about it is the possibility to cast different kind of user interfaces or digital information to, uh, <clears throat> to the real life what we're experiencing here. So projecting, for example, screen to here to, to air through some sort of device. And uh, <clears throat> this augmented reality is really most likely going to be amazing new frontier. And it's really difficult for us yet to tell what all will happen because of augmented reality. Just like it was really difficult to tell what all happened because of smartphones. Who knew we need Snapchat, right? So, <clears throat> making guesses what will happen with the augmented reality is quite irrelevant. More relevant probably is that realizing it is coming and we need to be ready and prepared for that. But we have that project where we need to create the individual connection with our customers already with the devices we have today, right? So we don't have time for this. Why, why is this guy talking about augmented reality because we have this this huge project and anyways it's going to take a huge amount of time before this augmented reality becomes reality. Well I would like to remind you guys about how dramatic this smartphone revolution has actually been. So even if it feels so obvious for us to use these smartphones it's only very short time ago when they didn't really exist. So the original iPhone, which cost $600 and didn't have much of the specs, just as the first speaker said, compared to Xiaomi Redmi Note 3, just pretty random Android phone, 3% market share, three times cheaper, and I don't know how many gigahertz more it has compared to the original iPhone and how many more pixels. So. 0 to 2.5 billion people in 9 years, just 9 years, significantly faster than any other digital revolution before that. And the devices are getting cheaper and processors are getting better and faster all the time. So maybe it is time for us to realize that this uh, thinking that we can wait for 5 years and build our current systems and then we start building building again for the augmented reality uh, when it might be big, maybe that's a little bit too risky. That's at least what I would like to challenge you guys to think about. So, okay, if we now start building for the augmented reality, and we don't know what it's going to be, and what it's going to do to our businesses, and we still have this project, how, are, how, 
how can we get the invest investments for that and doesn't make any sense to start building it anyway. Well, luckily, Google, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, all those big boys have a made choice on behalf of all of us. And we can start using already today technology that is fully ready for augmented reality. And that technology, ladies and gentlemen, is JavaScript. JavaScript is the development language for any user interface, for any screen. For any screen today, and for any screen in the foreseeable future. It is the development language that allows you to build the logic straight to the device, no matter what the device is. Now, it doesn't really help that you guys go to your CTO and say that, hey, let's just implement JavaScript framework and, and boom, we're saved. Everything is fine. Of course, what you need to be able to do is you need to be able to take advantage of that technology by leading it, using it for your business. So how we see that for us is that companies need to have two different kind of processes in order to be able to grow your business today and also to be ready for the tomorrow. So this 2022 project in a sense is totally fine because there are a lot of things that are better to be built very carefully, slowly, gradually, and so forth. For example, CRM. We want to make sure that all the classified information is safe. We don't want to mess with that. We want to be able to understand how our inventory works. So we want the ERP to work solid, right? We want to be able to manage our data properly. We want to be able to have scalable database systems without our systems collapsing. So this is what we call at Frosmo the long-term infrastructure development. And that is fine, it's slow, and you take it easy, and you take it carefully. Because when you create this foundation, you have another process. And that is very fast, that's very fluid, that's a very iterative process. And that's where you build straight to the device. And that's when you use JavaScript. And building straight to device means that you can build the user interface basically separately from your infrastructure. The user interface communicates with your infrastructure, but you don't need to release it slowly. You don't need to develop it for five years or even have these two year cycles for revamping your website or mobile site or whatever. But what you can do is you can just develop it continuously straight to the device for all these different devices and all these different channels. And when you use this technology, and when you use this mentality of building things, you are also ready for the future. You are so much faster as an organization team and your technology stack is so different. So, <clears throat> it is, as I said, it's not enough to just use the technology and even having these two processes but then also how you, how you manage it. So, we all know it. UX is super important. And it's not the user interface, but it's the product, the business model. Uh, it's the way you communicate in every channel. And for perfecting the UX, this is far superior way of developing things. The second thing, what we've discovered, what the best companies do really well, 
is that they are more and more transforming their business into service business model. Service business model is important because if we think about this individual communication with our customers, it needs to be justified. Otherwise, you're just spamming them, right? There needs to be a reason why we have this constant communication. And for that, service business model is far superior. So most of the companies, but well, today, might sell one of product, uh, products, like new running shoes, every two years or a year or something like that, need to radically rethink their businesses into services where they can constantly sell something to their customers and have the communication actively. That is the, probably the moment that is the best way uh, for customer retention and to create a solid foundation for growing business. And then the third component is that because it's getting more and more difficult to compete, for example, with price, going against Amazon. Amazon Prime has, by the way, 50%. 50% of the Americans have an Amazon Prime account. Think about it, 50%. Nothing drastic happens, it's fairly easy to say that Amazon has won the retail business in America. Most likely they will win it also in India. What are the next markets that are going to take? So competing with price is getting really, really difficult. So service business model, <coughs> user experience, and the third component, exclusivity. How can you as a business, create something that no other business can serve or offer. Again, <coughs> for building all these three things, this fast fluid development process is far superior compared to anything, any traditional web development process. It is not just user interface, but as I said, it's also logic. You can implement new business models this way. You can implement new uh, pricing models this way. You can implement new services this way. Surprisingly, my company, Frosmo, is a software, soft, uh, software as a service solution for managing and leading and executing uh, this kind of development process. Uh, I founded the company already in 2008. We were originally a platform for game developers, browser-based game developers, but most of the game developers are broke, so we didn't manage to make any sustainable business out of it. 2011, we switched and started to sell to diff different consumer digital businesses, and uh, we have fantastic customers also here in Turkey. For example, with Saat per Saat, what we do is we have uh, basically copied the, the selling model that they had offline to online and it has been tremendously successful. With Decathlon Turkey, for example, what we do is we help them to bypass the complexities of the platform what the headquarters in France provide because in France they have different kind of needs compared to Turkey. So with this method they can bypass that and, and create uh, perfect solutions for the Turkish market. I have one minute left and then we can have the coffee break. Uh, we have a stand there and uh, we have our Turkish team also in presence. <coughs> what I would like to say in the final words, next revolution, augmented reality, will be here most likely sooner than we think. Luckily, there's a technology that allows us to be prepared for that change and that is JavaScript. But the technology itself is not enough, but the way you manage and lead with the technology. And that is the, having two different processes, the long-term infrastructure process, and then the fast fluid development straight to the device. Thank you very much, it was a pleasure to be here.